Hello, adventurers! Welcome to the largest bird park in Asia, Bird Paradise. In this ultimate video guide, I'll be covering all the main attractions and ranking them out of 5 stars. Stick till the end because I have some valuable tips that will enhance your own visit. Let's begin. First, let me give you a rundown of the park. Looking at the map, this is what we have. Eight of the main attractions are walk-in aviaries. In most of the aviaries, they'll be walking on these boardwalks where the birds fly freely around the area. It's amazing. Although technically they're still within a cage, it's a much happier sight compared to seeing them confined into small cages. The boardwalks are built at the same level as the trees, so you have a very good eye-level view of the birds in the trees. And it's also multi-layered. When you look down, you get a bird's eye view of the ground dwelling bird. Bird's eye view of birds. Who's the bird now, huh? Even more amazing is that all of the aviaries have these large air conditioned areas with lots of interactive display. So you can sit and rest or walk around and learn fun facts about birds. Seriously, the aircon makes daytime visit much more bearable. Now, Let's get close and personal into the aviaries. The heart of Africa is the largest out of all the aviaries that are here. It simulates a forested valley in continental Africa. Along the boardwalks, you can find weaver birds and their intricately woven nests. There are even higher platforms to have a view from the canopy. To get a closer look, and even interact with the birds in person, you can join their feeding sessions at $8 per person. It's a round shaped feeder, so you can always turn the bird to the angle that you want. Look at that. <laughs> it was a really nice experience to have the birds perched and eating off your feeding bowl. In my opinion, it's worth the $8 cost price. At the very least, I highly recommend being here to watch the feeding session at 9.30. While the feeding is ongoing, many of the birds will gather here, so it makes it easier for you to watch them. For the beautiful scenery and the fantastic array of lively, colourful birds, this gets a 4.5 out of 5. The Wings of Asia has a familiar oriental theme. Here's my favourite spot, a hut by a terrace of paddy fields. It's so cosy. There are really big birds, like the stocks and the pelicans. Here, you can also join them for a feeding session. But I don't really like the feeding session here. You'll be standing at this high platform, while the birds pitifully wait for you to throw some fishes down. You don't really get to interact with the birds personally. It doesn't look like a fun, intimate experience, so I don't recommend joining this one. I like the whole setup here. The Bali-style architecture, the statues and the arches, but the birds just aren't as exotic and lively as the other aviaries. So, I'll give it a 4 out of 5. The Sky Amphitheatre is where you can watch trained birds do tricks while learning fun facts about them. There are two shows here, Predators on Wings and Wings of the World. Each shows run twice a day on this schedule. The Predators on Wings showcase very cool predatory birds like the American Bald Eagle, White-Bellied Sea Eagle, Brahmini Kite, the Buffy Fish Owl, King Vulture, and the Marabou Stork. The Wings of the World showcase iconic birds doing things you wouldn't expect a bird to do. Some of the birds in the park can only be seen in the shows. So if you want to catch them all, you gotta catch the shows. If you have to choose one, the Predators on Wings is more entertaining. The experience of watching a big eagle up close and having a huge vulture flying overhead was amazing. The 
the moment I stepped into the crimson wetlands, the name made sense. There's a pond full of pink flamingos, colored ibises, and the roseate spoonbills. They were also many vibrant macaws going about their lives. Some of the birds here are really playful, like borderline naughty. For the vibrant, vivid color and the energy of the inhabitants here, this place gets a 4.5 out of 5. This area simulates the Amazonian rainforest. The birds here are very unique. A lot of them have features that you don't normally see in a bird. Like this dorky helmeted curasso and the Andean cock of a rock. My favorite bird here is the Toko Toucan. Just look at him with his large orange beak. While it's got unique birds, I feel that the birds here are lacking the energy to make this place feel welcoming. So it's a 3.5 out of 5. This area houses songbirds renowned for their melody. Come, have a listen. I hear the cheerful lorries from the next door more than I hear the songbirds. You can still find some pretty looking birds here. The lorries next door are just too loud for me to enjoy the songs of the forest. So I'll give this place a 3.5 out of 5. The lorry loft is the most cheerful place in the whole park. It's just so many happy lorries and lorry kids all playing around. You can hear them all chirping. They are so social. I love watching them play with each other. They also play with you. You can also join the feeding sessions, but be prepared to be swarmed by hungry lorries. For the fitness of a look and the unique experience of being assaulted by tens of birds, this place gets a 4.5 out of 5. This area simulates the lowland forest of Papua. The star of this area is the southern cassowary. You can feed the huge cassowary in the feeding session. It was really cool to see it up close and watch it gobble up big fruits. And then there's an opportunistic lorikeet pretending to be a cassowary. While the scenery is great and the cassowary bird is magnificent, I feel that they need more birds here. So I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. The Australian Outback simulates the Australian Outback. My favorite bird here is the tawny frogmouth. And check out this super weird bird. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a wannabe bird wallaby. I feel that the Australian outback is a bit dry. There aren't as many birds that you can find here compared to the other aviaries. So I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5.
Penguin Cove is a multi-story indoor aviary recreating the Antarctic environment where penguins can happily dive and swim. It feels so magical to watch them play. Feels like they are aware of how awestruck the children and the adults were. They would come near the glass divider to give us a good show. For the playful penguins and the very cool setup here, it's a 4 out of 5. The Wing Sanctuary houses their birds in cages made out of this light netting. You can find the park's bigger hornbill collections here. You can also find some toucans and other smaller colourful birds. I do understand that it could be dangerous to be in a walk-in aviary with one of these. One wrong move, I might lose an eye. And for the birds that are endangered, we might be a danger to them. At least the cages look big enough for them. Anyway, compared to the other aviaries, I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Normally, ticket costs $48 for adults and $33 for children. Currently, local residents get 20% off after they sign up for a free membership. I've come up with a route that can help you see the most out of your time and energy here. Back to the map of our park, the main attractions are arranged like a ring. The main aviaries are in the outer ring, connected by paths through the center. I've included connecting lines to indicate if they are connected by a pathway. To get the best experience, arrive as soon as the park opens at 9 o'clock. I'm the first in the park. Start with Heart of Africa. Join in or at least watch the 9.30 feeding session. Next, follow the boardwalks to Wings of Asia. Try to watch the 10 o'clock pelican feeding session. Then, follow the Bali Arch to get to the Sky Amphitheatre. You should be able to catch the 10.30 show, Predators on Wings. The show takes about half an hour, after which you can visit the Crimson Wetlands which is just beside the Sky Amphitheatre. It will be good to catch some rest and some food here. I suggest bringing your own food, maybe some sandwiches, so you can save some money here. Remember to eat outside of the aviaries. For drinking water, you just need to bring your water bottles because there are these dispensers near the toilets where you can refill your water bottle for free. Don't go too far from here because at 12.30, you want to catch the wings of the world at the Sky Amphitheatre. After that, get to the Amazonian Jewels via the Crimson Wetlands. Follow the boardwalks which will bring you to the Songs of the Forest, then the Lorry Loft. There is also a feeding session here that I would recommend, but the timing doesn't match this recommended route. Keep following the boardwalks and you will reach the mysterious Papua. There is also a feeding session with the Kasuari, but it's 1pm so it will be too rushed for this route. Continuing on, you will reach the Australian Outback. Keep going, then you will reach the Penguin Cove. If you are exhausted at this point, there's a nice air-conditioned cafe where you can recharge with the full view of the playful penguins. If you want to see big birds, visit the Wing Sanctuary before you go. The most impressive birds here are on the lower level. Go to the left-hand side while facing the Wing Sanctuary sign. I hope this has helped you know more about Bird Paradise. If there are any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. If you like nature guides like this, check out my video on Sungai Buloh. It's another great place where you can explore nature in Singapore. I'll see you there.